Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Nikki Free, and I'm back with another video. I wanted to come on today and talk to you guys about the um, movie with Angelina Jolie, Those Who Wish Me Dead. Now, for those of you, of you who don't know, I'm going to give a little disclosure. I have two favorite celebrities of all time. Angela, I can't even talk. Angelina Jolie and Prince, period. The reason why they are my favorite celebrities, well, there's many reasons why they're my favorite celebrities, but the main reason is for similar, it's a similar reason. It's because of their ability to be themselves, unapologetically themselves. That's one of the main reasons why I like them both so much. And that's what really drew me to both of them. Like, wow, like I, Personally, I never was a wild child, per se. And when I first saw Angelina Jolie, I'm like, wow, a person could be this free? A person could be like this? You know, and seeing someone like her at a young age, and just being this, you know, wild and free and just able to just do her thing and just, you know, it was amazing. You know, I just thought it was just so amazing. And Prince being a man and being so in tune with his feminine and masculine side and just how he combined it and, and just how he did not care about social norms. Oh, it was amazing. So both of them, they have this ability um, to just, they had this, you know, just what I saw was an authentic person. And I feel like in life we're also repressed because of family, because of jobs, because of what have you. A lot of us can't really be that free because we have to, we have things that are repressing us, but there are things that we kind of have to do. I, I, I don't, not do, but it's hard to explain. But for instance, if you're working in a corporate job and you kind of wanted purple hair or you wanted blue hair, it would be kind of hard to just say, well, this is me, you know, and go to a corporate, certain corporate jobs, you know, or if you want piercings, you know, you wanted to pierce certain things and put tattoos or what have you, you know, at certain companies, that would be like, you may not be able to keep that particular job. So what I'm saying is I think we're all repressed in that way. And just to, to me, anybody who can unapologetically be themselves despite themselves despite everything. I love it. I love it. Those are like my favorite kind kinds of people. So um, yes. Anyway, back to the movie. Angelina Jolie, she does it again. I feel like action movies, that is her lane. I, I feel like she does so well with action movies. I feel like <coughs> she always delivers when it comes to action movies. She's not going to let you down. And in this movie, I don't I don't want to give spoilers because I don't know if you guys have seen this movie. It's still on HBO Max and it's in theaters, too, some theaters. Now, in this movie, Angelina, she just comes across as the old Angelina that we knew. We haven't seen her in a movie in a while, so it was so good that she fed her fans this movie, I think with the action and all of that. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. She has she has made movies um, over the years, but this was, this just brought us back to, you know, the Angelina that I, I love, personally. I love her in action, and I love her in, like, like Girl Interrupted, I like her when she's playing like a villain. <laughs> I think she does very well. Maleficent, that was amazing, I love that too. So I think Angelina does good when she plays like a villain and when she plays like uh, anything like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That movie was so good. That's one of my favorites. That was an amazing movie too. Um, that one, I think, it's hard to pick a favorite, but I do love Mr. and Mrs. Smith because it was so funny. Like I was laughing. Um, it was just a great movie. And I just recently watched it again because I had forgotten like what it was, you know, like what it was about, kind of. Um, not what it was about, but I had kind of forgotten 
everything that happens in the movie. So I watched it again and it was really, really funny. But anyway, Angelina Jolie does really good with action movies. So this movie was an action movie. It was about, um, basically, it had like two parts. It had her situation where she was like overcoming this trauma that had happened. And then it had this little boy who was dealing with drama from his father. Um, something that happens, I can't say because I don't want to move, but he was dealing with something with his father. And then we had her who was dealing with um, her situation. So you had these two broken people coming together and basically leaning on each other to survive something bigger. <laughs> So, of course, there's a fire um, that's in there, but it kind of like all intertwines. And then, you guys, they have this black lady on there. And she has the most unexpectedly great role. And, I, you know, I man, let me just see. I didn't take notes. I don't know what I was thinking. I did not take notes. Um, so I am going to, listen, I'm going to look her up because I want to give her credit. I don't, her name is Medina Singhor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Medina did her thing, okay? And I, listen, I didn't expect her part to do what it did. I also want to say thank you to whoever, I, I'm not sure if this is who does the makeup and the hair and all that in the movie, but I just want to say that it was good to see a black woman without a wig on and with her natural hair. <laughs> it was just like flowing and I mean, not that there's anything wrong with wearing a wig. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like it was just nice because I feel like I've heard a lot of actresses say that they have to put on, you know, either straighten their hair or put on wigs or, you know, look a certain way, you know, to be in these films. So to me, I automatically off the bat had a lot of respect, you know, for the movie, just seeing someone with curl naturally, you know, her curly hair and in its natural state, healthy, you know, nice and conditioned you know it was like blowing in the wind I was like okay like I like that you know like that was because let's be honest you know most times they throw these wigs on and in the conditions that they were in they were in a fire there was smoke and even her you know her hair got smoky her face got smoky I mean the last thing we need is like a lace wig with dust and smoke and lift you know it would have been I'm glad they let her wear her hair and I think this is just a good thing. We need to see more people. Um, I mean, I see a lot of non-black women with short hair on other movies, you know, really short hair. I see them with curly hair that's kind of like whatever, short, you know, whatever, long, whatever. That's, I see it all, but I don't always see... Um, like black women or I don't see enough of black women with their own hair and I think that's important because if you want to normalize something um, and it not be like a stigma we have to have representation everyone is not wearing wigs and wigs you know everyone that's not everyone's story so it's good to show different you know types of hairstyles on black women and not just the lace front wigs or not just some kind of wig. So I like that. And let me get back to the movie, but I did like that. I really, really like that. So whoever the, the whoever did that, whoever's in charge of that, I don't know if she said it. I don't know who was in charge, but kudos because like I said, everybody's not able to do that. Moving on to Angelina. Angelina, girl. Now, you are my favorite. I'm always Team Angelina. I don't care about Brangelina. I don't care about, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Aniston. None of that. Billy Bob Thornton and his, Laura Dern. None of uh, Team Angelina. Period. Period. So, <laughs> um, I'm a true Angelina. So, always on the side of Angelina. 
But anyway, that wig, girl, that wig that Angelina Jolie had on, it had a mind of its, it was its own character. Like, what was that? I, okay, so this is my, here, here is what I think. And this is just me. I think Angelina is so beautiful that they have to do something, you know, to kind of roughen her, you know, rough her up so she doesn't look so, you know, sexy all the time. You know, because everything about her is, to me, it's like sexy. She's beautiful, you know, like Hollywood A-lister. So I think they have to do things to kind of play her down in certain roles, like Maleficent. You see how they made her look, like they put those things on her. They, they had to do a lot to, I think they kind of, even on that, I think they kind of overdid it to take away from her beauty, you know, and to make her look more like, a, you know, a witch or whatever. So I think on this movie, because she's supposed to be like Montana, you know, a, um, a fire jumper in Montana. She's not supposed to be glamorous or sexy at all. You know, that's not that's not what that character was. That character was like more like a tomboy, more like somebody that's you know rough and rugged, and you know hangs with the fellas. You know, I even picture that lady being bigger and more you know like husky, you know, and rough looking. But be, like I just picture her like married to a man with a mullet or something, you know, like that's how I saw that lady, Hannah in my head, you know, like Montana living in the mountains, roughing it, rough and tough, no makeup, you know, makeup, what's that, you know, but I think because she is who she is, you know, she's Angelina, and the first thing you think of when you think about Angelina is beauty, sexy, you know, Angelina Jolie, the lips, you know, so I feel like that wig... <laughs> I feel like that wig, they probably could have gave her a bigger wig, but I feel like they did that wig because that wig took away from her looks. You know, that wig was, I think that may have been a synthetic wig. That wig was, woo, that wig was something else, I'm telling you. So I don't think they wanted to give her this perfect wig. Because they wanted this to be like a you know a woman who wasn't trying to curl her hair or trying to have the perfect look. So I think that's why she had that wig. And that wig was something else that she had. I, I just I was just like, what is going on with this wig? But then it kind of clicked. Anyway, that's not important. Enough of the hair talk. But it's just you know, as a girl, you know, we look at stuff like that, and it's just it was just funny because of how they. They kind of played it. And then like her, you know, of course her attire, everything, you know, went with the mountain living. But her attire wasn't, you know, her attire, it, she's still Angelina, you know, she's, yeah. Anyways, so in the movie, they're the beginning of the movie. It starts out like in Florida. And it's so weird because... The way it starts out, I'm like, what is going on here? You know, like, what does this happen? Because I thought they were in Mon gonna, going to be in Montana. So it's weird how they transition into Florida to um, Montana. But I feel like that part, it made sense except for one part. And I don't want to say that part because it's going to give the movie away kind of, but I still have questions about, like, what really was the dad, you know, what was the dad, what information did the dad have kind of thing, or what was the dad into, what was his dad really into kind of thing. I just have, I don't want to say it, um, I'm just kind of like skating around it, but I just have some questions, I still have questions, you know, about what, about that dad, but anyway, so... You know, like they're in Florida and the little boy, let me tell you something. That little boy, let me look his name up too. I'm terrible. Finn Little. Finn Little, let me tell you something. These people, this show to me, because for me, I'm not going to lie. 
And this is because I'm a fan. When I watch a movie with Angelina Jolie, everybody else in the background is kind of like white noise. You know, I'm watching them, except for the Bone Collector, because Denzel did the thing. Oh, him and Queen Latifah. So the Bone Collector, no. You know, Denzel, you know, he did the thing. And I like Queen Latifah and Latifah. For the most part, I should say, most of the movies that Angelina's in, even Girl Interrupted, I, Winona and them, Winona did her thing, but still, it's kind of like background, you know, like white noise. So, in this movie, though, Angelina, I was very focused on Angelina because I wanted to see, you know, after, you know, like, is she still, does she still have it? Like, what's going on with Angelina these days? And she still has it. She was magnificent. But that little boy, you guys, he held his own with Angelina. That little boy is bad. When I tell you he can act, he's going to grab your attention. If you have, if you've seen it, comment below. Let me know what you think about being little. That boy did it. He is very, very talented. Like, I believed him in that movie. Like, I, you know, I felt my emotions coming up with him in that movie. That boy was good. Like, he was really, really good. He, he played that role so well. I mean, he, here's the thing. It's funny because I watched the movie, and I'm sure they did the movie a couple of years ago. And you know, when you're like in the age, that 12, 13, 14 age, you do grow a lot from 12 to, you know, um, 14 or whatever. I think he's like 14 now. And I think they said they kind of started filming the movie. I think they started filming it like 2019. So a couple of years ago. So he, you know, he could have grown some. But to look at him on the movie and how he was acting and stuff, he didn't even look the same how he looked on his interviews. You know, it just, on the interviews, he was like this, happy-go-lucky kid. He was just a kid, you know, but on the movie, it was just, it's just amazing to me how he transformed into this character, and he owned it. He owned that role. Like, that little boy, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't win an award, because he did a damn good job. Didn't miss a beat. Um, another person I want to talk about, the black lady in the movie, Medina. Sorry, Medina. She, okay, so Medina had a husband. I loved the dynamic. I loved how this, whoever did this movie, let me tell you something. It was, um, I don't know what his name is. I need to find his name too. He, he, he does The Walking Dead. Taylor Sheridan, he did, he was a screenplay. He did, I guess, screenplay by him, whatever. He's a director. That man, listen, listen, if I'm ever in a movie, I want him to be my director because I feel like he really, really, really did a damn good job with those characters. And he also did a good job with showing another side that we don't really get to see. I love that. So he had this, because um, generally, you know, in a lot of these movies, they have a kind of like in reverse. You would have seen Angelina with the good man, you know, and then... Medina, black lady, would have been single and pregnant. But you saw the black lady was pregnant and she had a supportive husband. You know, she had a good man who loved, like, and, and you could see the genuine love. And that was so beautiful. Like, everything about this movie was, I think, something that we need right now. Because we're going through so much. Like, I don't know about everybody, but I feel like there is so much going on right now. I feel like people are going through a lot, you know, right now. People are trying to heal. And I feel like this movie showing that positive, positive bond with um, the husband and wife, because <clears throat> one thing I know is 
I was just thinking about this. I feel like in the 90s, it was cool to show families, you know, like, like um, not dysfunctional families, like uh, positive families on TV. And then it kind of took a turn when we started having like the married with children. You know, we started having like the more the dysfunctional families, which may have been more of a reflection of what was going on at that time. But I remember there was a time where it was it was cool. You know, we saw all these families, you know, um, on TV. You know, like even back in the day, they had like the Brady Bunch, like TV shows where even blended families were living together in harmony. Um, you know, the Cosby Show, we had, you know, families on TV. We got to see a family on TV. So when we were little, we had, we saw like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do when I get older. I want to have a family, you know, whereas now I don't really see, you know, as I don't see that as much, so I'm not sure what the kids today are aspiring um, to have. You know, that may not be their, what they aspire to have, but I'm just saying, like, it was it was kind of nice to see, like, a nice family, and I feel that is something um, good to see. You know, it doesn't have to be all that we see, but I think even though the Cosby show and shows like that weren't necessarily a uh, a lot of people's reality you see people were tuning in because people always want something better in life for the most part you know people aspire to do more in life than just have a dysfunctional family or just come from you know a family that's torn so <clears throat> coming back to this movie I thought that was a very important element I also think in, um, it shows growth I love seeing um, that they put that black woman in the movie with a positive side. You know what I mean? With a positive, um, I guess, life, if you will. And then you had, um, because here's the thing. If you never see that, then what would you think if you never saw it? You have to understand that just like there's single um, black, a lot of single black women in the world, there are white women and other women that are single as well. So I thought it was good the way he decided to go in that direction. I loved it. Um, I think Medina's role could have been played by anybody of any background. I'm glad he chose her because I think that's a side that people need to see. Um, I love that her husband, I loved her husband in this movie. I loved him showing um, a man just being a man and still being gentle enough to um, just have that gentle side, that, that just loving good side, you know, that just loved his wife. So, um, yeah, I love that part. I love that dynamic. It was just really special. I also like that he showed um, the side of Angelina Jolie's character. Angelina Jolie's character is like a lot of people. No children. Don't really give a damn about having kids. But I like that he showed that even though that wasn't her thing. She still had a heart and love for the innocence of children, if you know what I mean. So I think that a lot of people, like she may have been a character, like she said, in the character didn't like kids necessarily, but I like that he showed that because I think that's with anybody. Like, when it comes to children, there's this innocence about children. Like, you don't want the children hurt. You know, you, I don't care if you have kids or not. There's something about the thought of a child being hurt. The same with, like, elderly people. You know, we just have that in us that we don't want that. But a lot of times it could be the other way. With a character like Angelina, he could have went a way in which she didn't care about the child. 
she didn't care about any kids and you know to I don't want to give away the movie but it could have been like she just was the type of person that didn't like kids and didn't have compassion for them in any sense you know um so I'm trying to say this without saying too much, but I love that he added a human side to her. That's what I'm saying. This single woman who, you know, was rough and there was no partner in sight that we really saw um, that she had. Um, I didn't see any type of um, real emotional connections that she had with anyone. So she kind of was a, a loner, if you will. Um, she certainly had her friends in the in the men, but I I didn't we didn't see her with a mom or a dad or you know or or any type of family or anything that alluded to her having any kind of bonds with anyone really. You know, she just didn't seem like that type of person. So I like that he brought even this person. He didn't he brought out a human side to her as well. I love that. I love it. And you guys are not going to believe this, but Tyler Perry. <laughs> Tyler Perry. I was like, what? Tyler Perry is in this movie. Now, I I don't, like I said, I don't like spoilers. Let me tell you why I don't like spoilers. I don't like spoilers because I know people and... I will say, hey, you know, they'll tell me about a movie. Oh, this is a good movie. Oh, okay. And, and, I'm, I'm, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to see that one. Don't tell me anything about it because I hate spoilers. I, hate, I don't want to hear anything about the movie. I When I watch a movie, I like to be totally not in the know. I don't want to know anything. You know, that's just how I am when I watch a movie. But it never fails. I have this one friend who will certainly just tell me like it's like what i just told you like i was watching game of thrones i was a late bloomer to game of thrones and i'm telling her um oh yeah i'm on chap i'm on season whatever and she's like well wait till season five everybody dies and i'm like i just told you don't tell me and then then we'd like talk about the characters i'll be like oh well you know who i really like i like this person i'll name a person that i like and she's like oh he's gonna die he won't make it to the end and i'm just like oh my god like and for some reason i have no idea but she can't stop she she can't not and to her she's like well i'm not telling you the movie i'm just telling you they're not gonna die i'm like but that you know anyways I don't like that like that's that annoys the shit out of me when people do that like I hate it so I don't like to give spoilers but anyway um, this movie okay so Angelina Angelina delivered I Angelina I am a fan of period just I saw an interview with Angelina Jolie. I've seen probably most of her interviews uh, on YouTube just because we've been on quarantine and, um, you know, I've been catching up on stuff that I didn't watch in the past. And I just went back and watched a bunch of her interviews. And she was doing this interview when she was about 23, 24 years old. And she was so raw. Like, it's amazing. The lady was like telling her, um, the lady was asking her, does her beauty get in the way of applying for roles? Kind of like how I said earlier, like they have to like scruff her up for this movie and take, you know, away that whole image of Angelina in our minds. So they throw this wig, this terrible wig on her. Anyway, so it's funny because at 24, she was like, and she was so genuine. I need to, hopefully I can, um, I'm going to try to attach that interview in the description because she goes, she was like, she goes, um, well, I don't, you know, I really don't see it that way. She was like, I don't see myself that way. She was like, I think it's crazy. Like she just was talking about, she, it's crazy how they want people to be perfect. And for her, when she sees beauty, um, if it's too perfect, it's like there's no life there. That's how she feels, like there's no life there. 
And I thought, oh my God, this this is a genuinely cool chick. You know, like she's, basically what she's saying is she sees beauty in more than just America's standard of beauty or, you know, the, you know, or whatever the standard of beauty is in that industry. She can actually look at someone and see beauty in them, even if they're not the typical, you know, standard of beauty of America or Europe or whatever. So um, I thought that was just the way she said it. And then she said something after that, she goes, and the lady just didn't take that. The lady said, well, you, this is you, you came here like this. You got those looks, you know, and the lady just, she kept going, I guess the lady kept emphasizing that, but you are beautiful. What like the lady didn't get it or, or, you know, she's like, how can you not see that you're beautiful? The lady didn't say that, but that's kind of like how I felt. Like the lady's like, but you're Angelina. What do you mean you don't see that? And Angelina was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I get it. Because she knows that everybody's like, goo goo gaga over her. But she was saying how, she's like, I get it, but I, I don't feel that way. I, I don't, you know, I'm, she said, I'm not one way or the other. She said, I have a lot of insecurities. And it was just like, wow. You know, so it just goes to show in life. You just never know because I think Angelina Jolie is beautiful. Like, I really, really, really do. I think she's gorgeous. And I would never think, you know, like, she would really be feeling, especially when she was like 23. I, 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 that was when she was really, you know, she was everywhere. She was like the cream of the crop. You know, everyone was Angelina, Angelina, Angelina. Um, and, and even still now, not just then, but I'm just saying that's when she was just winning all these awards and just, you know, I believe that was when she was like, anyways, I, she was popular then, you know, and of course everyone thought she was beautiful. So it was amazing that she felt that way, you know, and it just goes to show that we all have insecurities. We're so much more alike than we're different as women. And it's so funny because we don't feel that way because we look at another woman as like, you look at a woman that's beautiful, you feel like, how could she have it? What are you into? Like, I'm like, what the hell are you insecure about? You know, but of course, we are, we all are our own worst critics. But that interview just, you know, was just very eye opening for me, just looking at it and how she felt. And there's other interviews um, that she's done that made me really respect her. There, um, I'm going to say this and I'll get back to the movie, but she did an interview um, after she did Girl Interrupted. And um, the guy that was interviewing her, I can't think of his name right now. He's a tall guy. Um, I just can't think of his name right now. I think it's... Um, I, I just can't think of his name. But anyway, he's one of those late night talk show hosts. And he was talking about Whoopi's um, hair, you know, in Girl Interrupted, which Whoopi had an afro, which was not that big of a deal. You know, like what? Like, I didn't even think twice about it, you know? And it was funny because he goes, and Whoopi, what was up with her hair? Like, it was just, like, you could put, like, um, luggage or something he said I don't know like he would just talk about her hair and you could tell Angelina was just kind of like how like what you know like she was like an afro like you could just tell that she really was just like what the hell are you talking about and to me like and then she goes on to say well I like everything about what be the afro just her period you know anyway so it just shows the difference between people and, you know, like she didn't just laugh at all. You know, she didn't just laugh and say, um, hi, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I was happy. like most people would do. So I think that's something that kind of sets her apart from others. And I think that's why she has the ability to go to all these different parts of the world 
And this was before. Now, these interviews was before she had the babies, you know, before she adopted the child, before she started going to all these different countries and doing these ambassadors and UN work and all that. This was before all that. This was, way, this was when she was much younger. Um, so I think that's why I think it was always in her you know, to be this person. And it, it makes me wonder, like, she just, I wonder, like, I'm thinking maybe her mom instilled that in her because she said she was kind of raised by her mom. Maybe her mom instilled those things in her. Or maybe that's just who I guess she is. I don't know. But at any rate, the movie. The movie was very good. I feel like um, the time that we're living in now and what we're kind of coming out of, we're kind of coming out of a storm, a freaking fire. I think the movie was great. Another thing I think that the person, whoever, you know, Taylor, he did a good job because he didn't make the movie too long. Now, I, since all this stuff has been going on, uh, my attention span is short, you know? And it is very hard for me, like, to sit down and watch a movie, to really just sit down and watch a movie. You know, like a two-hour movie? Probably not happening, you know? Um, this movie I probably would have watched either way, but the fact that it was an hour and, like, 39 minutes or something like that, hour and a half, I felt... Hour and 39, but, you know, I think that's including the credits and stuff. But, anyways, I thought that was perfect time. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. I felt like I'm glad they didn't do a super, super long movie because right now we don't need that. You know, we needed exactly what he gave us. I love what he gave us. I love the movie. But, you know, I am a little bit biased because I do love Angelina Jolie. So I was so happy that I was able to see her come back in her element, the action element. I would love to see Angelina come back. I know now she's a mother and she's like a UN ambassador and, you know, she's doing all these things. So I don't know if now she can't do certain roles. I'm not sure how that works when you're, you're an ambassador or whatever, but I would love to see her come back out and take a role that's like that gritty, um, like a crazy role, like, like an edgy, edgy role. I would love to see her do another film like that, like a kind of like a girl interrupted type film, but not really. Just something I want to see. A combination between Girl Interrupted and Gia. I want to see her do a movie like that just at least one more time, like a really, really gritty one, um, because I love her in those kinds of movies. I just want to see her do a character that's just really just out there. I would love to see her do a wild and crazy um, rated R movie, but I don't know if she does that anymore, you know, I don't know if, I get it, she has six kids now, you know, she was a wife, um, well, I don't think being a wife would really change that, but, I mean, she has the kids, I don't know if that will stop her, but, I mean, it's her job, you know, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I would love to see her do another movie like that, and I'm curious to know if she would ever do it like that like another like more raunchier like just more gritty type movie because I feel like um, as of late the movie she's been doing has been a lot more polished than what we're we've, we're you you know we saw her do in the past and I welcome another movie like that I think that would be really really good to see you know as a fan but if not, that's cool. I can always go back and watch the old stuff. And I do really, really want to say, if you haven't already seen this movie, check it out. Um, I was like, early on, I was like, <gasps> you know, like it was one of the, like I like thrillers. And I like movies that make me like, 
take a deep breath and like wonder like what's gonna happen. I love that. And suspense, it was a thriller, it has suspense. Like I love that kind of stuff where I don't know like what's really gonna happen. Oh my God, are they gonna make it? You know, like I love stuff like that. So I also like um, surprise endings. Um, I heard a lot of people say, Mm, they didn't like I, I heard people like mumbles about the ending and yes I think the ending was kind of a surprise ending and I, and I must say I wasn't too happy about the ending um, but it is what it is it, it, I think it's a I think it's somewhat of a surprise ending because that definitely wasn't what I was expecting like watching it the ending I didn't expect it to end that way. Um, there is a scene where Angelina is fighting, and I, you guys, I uncontrollably was like, whoop his ass, Angelina! Get him, girl! <laughs> I mean, I was like in my living room screaming. She gave it to him like, I, I felt like I was there. So, I love that. I love that part. I love that she gave that um, action, and she had me so into it, into that character that I just really like, just uncontrollably started screaming at my television in the living room saying, get him, you know, so, and it's not often that I do that. I'm not usually that into the movies, but, you know, when someone is giving it to someone good, it, that was, that was awesome. So there are parts where this movie gets you going and it, it, it's, it's a good movie. You know, it's really a good movie. Um, and I feel like this movie is pretty, I get a little, I feel like it's, it's, it's the kind of movie that you can actually go see um, with just about anybody, you know, I think anyone would really enjoy this movie. It's kind of like it has something for everyone, I feel like. So, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Um, it wasn't exactly a feel-good, feel-good movie, but I feel like it was enough to not bring you down in these times. I don't know about you guys, but I can't watch the same movies that I watched pre-2020. It's so weird. Um, certain movies are so triggering for me now, you know, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way or if you notice a difference in yourself, but some movies are just like really triggering for me. It's just really like, I can't watch this because there's too much going on in the world and I feel like emotion, like emotion, like not a good way. So I, movies that I've in the past watched and liked a lot, I'm not able to watch them anymore. I'll give you an example, and you guys may know this movie. It's a very old movie. It's with Whoopi Goldberg. Um, it's called A Long Walk Home. I tried to watch that movie again the other day because it's an excellent movie, but I couldn't. The first um, maybe 10 minutes, did I even get through 10 minutes? And I just started like crying because of the scene and then I'm just like uh, I can't I'm not watching this again like I've seen the movie so many times like I know what it's about but it's one of those movies that you can actually watch again and again and it's fine you know well for me but I couldn't make it through it because I just feel like we've been through so much this last year and I, it just was triggering I just couldn't watch it so I don't know I can only watch certain movies now and it's or certain shows like it has to be you know not too much, not too little, you know. So yeah, things definitely, my tastes have changed and my attention span is definitely not what it used to be. I'm definitely not really down. When I see two hours, um, I'm kind of like, I kind of like skip over it. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. You know, I like something that's, you know, maybe an hour and a half or less. But um, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Check out the movie. Those Who Wish Me Dead. It's a good movie. Angelina's back. Um, she's been going through a lot in her life. And to give us this film, um, I thought she did an excellent job. I thought she did an excellent, excellent, excellent job. So, um, 
yeah, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.